There are three main things to consider when you're trying to find the right MOSFET for your design. How much current is going to be going through it when it's on, how much voltage you need to block when it's off, and what your control signal is. That's ID for eye drain, VDS, the drain source voltage, and VGS for your gate source voltage, respectively. Say you're going to be passing 5 amps through this when it's on. Say you're going to be blocking 80 volts when it's not on, and you'll use a 12 volt gate. This is actually pretty reasonable, say it's a 400 watt power supply design. The FET needs to be rated for the absolute maximums it could experience with some margin. Now, you can get into the scientifics of margin stacking. Don't go crazy with it. Try to aim for 20% in general. Though, if you're really down to the wire cost-wise or for something else, you can probably get down to 10% margin if you're really confident in your design. So, say this 80 volts that you need to block when it's off is not a perfect signal. Nothing is. Say it has 10% ripple, which means the peak you could see is actually about 88 volts. That's pretty good. And even though it only gives you about 13% margin, I would probably still go with a FET rated to about 100 volts. That's assuming I had over voltage protection somewhere else in this main line. You probably do in a 400 watt power supply. That's why we can go a little bit lower. 100 volts should be fine. This 12 volts is not likely to be messy and it should be low current because we're using the resistor right there, right? <laughs> It's, um, it's easy to find a high power FET that has a rating for the gate source voltage of about 20 or 30 volts. That should be plenty. For this, even though it's only 12, I would not go down to a 15 volt part. Honestly, that's just for simplicity. If this is the absolute max rating, you'll find a lot of the data sheet parameters cover things at the typical voltage, which is closer to half of the maximum rating. So if you pick a 20 or 30 volt part, you'll see 10, 15 volts in your typical, and it makes it easier, less math for us, right? This current, ID, is where I like to give the most margin. Even if you probably have other overcurrent devices in this main line, you just get better performance if you can slightly over-spec the FET for your current. So say you're passing five amps, right? If you give it 20%, about seven amps, you may find the resistances when it's on, or on resistance, to be higher than you might get from a FET that's rated to 10 amps. Don't go nuts on this. Again, the cost performance trade-off is absolutely not going to be worth it if you try to get a 100 amp FET in here when you could use one that passes 10. But the higher current a FET is rated to take, the more likely it is to have some thermal management in there. Heat is absolutely your enemy. It makes everything more difficult. So over-spec it a little bit. <laughs>